There goes the other one. You turn off the drawing motor. I got one on the other rod off too there a second. Um, oh, he's a nice fish. Whoa. Look at him go. I think he just figured out he's hooked. Whoa. All right. Whoa. Net me, baby. That's a nice fish. He's pulling the boat. Here he goes. <laughs> Here we go. Go for a ride. <laughs> All right, Nat. Here he comes. Oh, he's nice. He's nice. Come here, baby. Come on. Don't be scared of Nat. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Oh. Uh-huh. Look at that. Says so this catches fish some bit. So big that sometimes it's scary. <laughs> yeah, I've been scared a few times. Okay, here we go. This little packaging. There's the planer bobber itself. Got a nice little weight system on there. Comes with a swivel. Two of the release tubes. It's a nice feature in case you lose one. Two. And you got the directions. Oh yeah. Tells you everything you need to know on there about how to rig them, how to fish them. Nice. Jug fishing has caught fish way bigger than the world record for any rod and reel. People win in tournaments are using tactics such as drifting and strolling and bottom bouncing. Well, planer bobbers are about the same thing as jug fishing, only a little better in a way because it's controlled. You can make it go where you want, make it stop where you want, and when a fish hits it, instead of chasing the jug, you got it on your rod and reel and got a good chance at a world record. Okay, says these things glow in the dark and they never ever need batteries. Let's check it out. It says you can charge it with any light source. Okay, we're going to charge it. We're just going to try to use a trouble light and charge it. Let's see how this works. Give it Oh, five seconds more, huh? All right, I'm going to turn out the light. Let's see what happens. Whoa. -ho. <laughs> oh, that's a glow. Look at that. You can read the newspaper. <laughs> read the directions with it. Wow. That's a glow. Wow. Never ever needs batteries. Look at that. That's cool. You can see see the instructions in the dark with it. Almost use it for a flashlight. Holy sheep crap. Boy that thing glows. <laughs> Who wants to go fishing? Today we're going to be fishing with our new super slow drift planer bobbers. I'm going to show you how they rig up on here. First of all, you got a circle hook on the end of your leader. It's a nice little circle hook. It's a no set, no brainer job. Move up next area here goes to the swivel. Just a regular barrel swivel. Small weight. That's about a quarter ounce weight. Then the blue tube goes on there. What you want to do now is you want to slide the blue tube up a little bit. And you hook this. 
between the weight and the blue tube. There's a snap swivel on the back here. Hook it right on and you snap it. And what you want to do is pull enough line through there that you want to fish with. We're going to be fishing about three feet down. So I'm going to pull about three feet of line out. And that always includes the, the leader. I'm going to hook this thing to run to the left. And what we're going to do, get it out of the hook from there. We've got some big gizzard shad in the cast net here. Got one throw, caught all those with the cast net earlier. Get one of those out of there. Cut them. I like to use the head part most. Leave a little bit of meat and some gut. Generally what I do is I hook them right through the nose or the eyes, depending on the size of the hook you're using. There like that. That one's ready to cast out there. These are the only castable planers that there are on the market that I know of. There's a couple of little ones out there, but they don't do near the stuff that the planer bobbers do. Here, and we're going to start trolling very slowly with the trolling motor. So Head set in a rod holder. Click on the trolling motor on low. Off we go. This one here is all rigged up. All we need to do is cut us a nice piece of bait. We'll try the belly section of that same bait that we just cut here. Try a nice big piece. That's the nice thing about a planter bobber is it'll definitely hold up a big chunk of bait. These stomach pieces I generally hook through the, try to get a lot of the gizzard in there and the guts. Come out there with the circle hook. I always check that there's no scales on there. If you've got scales on there, you might miss a hook set. Now same thing with this, we're going to cast it out there, and off we go. Boosting the engine on and off, on and off. You can see this one out here working to the side. Just stays there to the side. What you do is you can loosen up the drag so that when a fish hits it, it takes drag and the circle hook's going to set it. Usually, what I do is keep giving it a little bit of line out and get them farther and farther out away from the boat so the fish aren't afraid of the boat so much. They're usually not afraid of the trolling motor. It's pretty quiet. This is a pretty catfish looking area. There's a lot of stumps and trees laying in the water. We generally do pretty good here, so we'll probably tear them up. But you can see the spread in between these things. Looks to be about a 40, 50 foot spread going already. And they'll just stay there on the far sides of your boat where you set them. You can let line out till they're 50, 75 feet out. Definitely stealthy little planers. Gotta pull them away from some of those trees out there because they'll snag on trees too. They're pretty snagless though with their circle hooks and the rigs the way they're set up. We're slowly gonna weave through this area. Keep feeding that line a little bit until we get it out. Yeah. 75 feet or so away from the boat. Makes it a lot more fun to reel them in from there too. Plus we seem to get bigger ones out there that are less afraid of all the noise going on in the boat. Super slow drift. 
I look catfishy out there, this cliff walls. He don't feel too big, but he's definitely probably a catfish. Got a good bend in the rod. It's the first fish of the year here for Allen Creek. We've been down in North Carolina fishing all winter for blue cat. Figured we'd come up here and get some of these channel cats out of Allen Creek. Oh, he's a nice one. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Nice fish. We should net him. Yeah, well, let's see if we can't just pull him in, huh? Looks like he's hooked pretty good right in the eyeball of wheat. <laughs> hey. Five, six pounder. Have a look at him. Oh yeah. What do you think, people? Super slow drift planter bobbers. That's it, America. That's the ticket to catching catfish, believe it or not. Let's see if we can't get him up. We got our first fish on. We're fishing with planter bobbers and cut shad. Winds out of the north, about 20 to 25 miles per hour, making fishing what some would think, well, pretty much impossible. We're using a small drift sock, or what some would call a sea anchor, to slow us down in the wind, otherwise we'd be just totally blown off the lake. But this thing will sure even the odds. Get one at your local marine store for about 25 or 30 bucks. It's a must have if you're going to fish some high wind. <laughs> he jumped. <laughs> Did you see him jump, Brett? You weren't looking the wrong way. <laughs> the fucker jumped. <laughs> he jumped. I guess he's not that little. fat he is, Britt. Big old redneck dog. Are you a redneck fishing dog? Look what we got. Got a catfish. I'm using a 5 aught circle hook. Like I said before, we're using cut shads. I'm using the heads and the guts section of it. He's about the size of your hand, the bait, maybe the size of your palm. Our speed, even with the drift sock, and I'm also using a trolling motor to kind of control the drift a little bit. Uh, I would still say it'd be about a half a mile an hour to three quarters of a mile an hour. Our outriggers help make our canoe a lot more stable of a fishing platform. And they also incorporated some nifty rod holders, too. The secret of catching catfish? It's the same all the time. You find out where they're feeding. Normally it's on a shallow flat. It's near deep water. Get you some planer bobbers. Just a big old heavy bobber. Tell you some shad through there. About three quarters of a mile an hour. Half mile an hour. You'll be in business. Just keep it moving slow. <laughs> Take it off. We got a motor though, Brad. Another reason planer bobbers are better than fishing with jugs. That's not ever happened to me yet with a uh, planer bobber. 